we're dealing with Moses and Joshua. Moses was the one that God appointed to bring his people out of Egypt. And you know the story. We've already told you about how God saved him and put him in an ark of bulrush and Pharaoh's daughter came and uh -huh. her servants heard a cry and went over and found the baby laying in the ark in the brink and brought the baby to Pharaoh's daughter and the baby looked pretty to her, a fair child. And she decided that she was going to raise the baby in her own house uh -huh. and call that, e that, that Hebrew child a child of hers. Yes, sir. You ever been around anybody that's so light you just know they white? <laughs> We're going to keep it real here today. My wife always get on me. She said, me and my, my youngest granddaughter look like white folks by the legs. And we try to get that tan, but the sand just won't stay. But she know, she know who I am. And I'm good, but I can laugh about it now, you know what I mean? I try to sit on the front porch and see get my tan. Yeah. Andy, you hear what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's something too watch yeah. <laughs> For some reason, they didn't just come back white again, you know? I, I tell her, I said, well, my grandmother, Ellen Miles, was a real light-skinned lady. Wasn't she suing you? That was your great grandmother. And grandmother was, I said, she has white hood. But let me tell you something, all our forefathers and, and grand, great grandmothers and all of them, they had some of them too. Right. Because we came by slave masters. Mm -hmm. But that's okay, because whatever God does, he does it good and very good. Yeah. Uh, so you take pride in who you are. Yes, sir. And what you look like. Yes, sir. Because I think the temptation said beauty is on the skin deep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. But I'm going to tell you something. There's some beautiful people that's going to hell. Yeah, yeah. Because they got their focus on beauty uh, instead of duty. Oh, the they want the beauty for the man, but they don't want to do the duty for the Lord. Uh -oh. But that's okay, because I can't put nobody nowhere. I'm just one trying to tell you about one that said he loved me so much that he gave me another chance. And now, what I'm really getting to is Moses and the children of Israel, if you remember, was out in the wilderness for 40 years. And they was out there because they were disobedient to God. Yes. God gave them a 40 day journey. And they got out there and got the griping and raising sand All and right. thanking God and turned it back on them and everything. And this is the same God that stood water up on water. Uh -huh. Looked at the wind and told the wind to blow all night long told the Red Sea to stand up and dried up the ground and it licked up the mud. And he looked at all the children of Israel and he told them, I want you to go forward. Go forward. But as they was going, Pharaoh's army was behind them. Yeah. And they got scared and they got to talking about Moses. Yes, sir. And they asked Moses, was there enough graves in Egypt that we should die? Mm -hmm. And you brought us all the way out here that we might die and we don't have anywhere to bury it. Moses told him to stand still. Stand still. And see the salvation of the Lord. Come on, Lord. And, you know, God had put a rod on, in Aaron's and Moses' hand. Yeah. This is the same rod that Moses went into Pharaoh and he brought ten plagues up on it. Uh -huh. And out of the ten plagues, you know, the last plague was death. Mm -hmm. And Moses, when Moses talked to, to Pharaoh and he told Pharaoh, God, God said, let my people go. And Pharaoh said, who is your God? I don't know your God. I want to do you know your God. Come on, Bishop. And if you know your God, you know that he's able to lift up thy 
knock down the enemy. Good question. He's able to give ease to trouble man. He's able to heal you when you're sick. Come on, man. He's able to feed you when you're hungry. I'm talking about my God right now. Uh, but do you know your God? That's what I want to know. Because, uh, see, I can't say how you feel about your God, but I can tell you that I love my God with uh, everything that I have. And he said something about him. When they got out there and Moses, when he held up the rod, he said something about God talked to the wind and told the wind to blow all night long. And the wind blew and the red sea parted itself and said something about it. Water stood up on water on one side and water stood up on water on another side. Yeah, and yeah. Moses looked out there and he told the people, now I want you to press forward in the name of our God. And they are out there and they got in a hurry and they got yeah, this running. Uh, they want to go across uh, yeah. the where they needed to go and they said something about it. Got out there, but let me tell you, Moses' arm, uh, it got to going down. Uh, it got heavy on him. It said that Aaron and Joshua raised his arm back up and wouldn't let it go because if his arm went down, the water would have came back together. But said something about God, uh, talked to him and told him, don't worry about that. Y'all just press forward and got out there and went across the Red Sea and said something about Pharaoh. Said, now look, uh, we got him now. Uh, they can't uh, get away from us. And Pharaoh sent his arm. He wouldn't even go itself. And said Pharaoh sent his army in there and told him, I want you to go and get them and kill all of them. Now, let me tell you something. Now, let me tell you, Pharaoh's army came off and went into the Red Sea and yeah, tried yeah. to capture God's children and said something about God. Uh, had control of the whole situation and said when they got out there, God uh, told Moses, uh, you're over on the other side now. I want you to take that same rod and let it down. And say when they let it down, the river, the Red Sea came back together. There's something about it. Kills Pharaoh's army. Let me tell you something. If God be for you, more in the world against you. Yeah, yeah. You're telling me, young folks, don't y'all worry about nothing because God is in the midst of it. But don't go out there playing games with him. I'll tell you something, my God, don't play. Come on, my son. God is real. And my God has brought me from a mighty a long way. And anybody here can say, God brought me from a I might have long way. Give me all right. Yeah. I'm gonna preach here today. Yes, I am. Yeah. But I'm gonna tell you something. This something happened when they got on the other side. The people got out there and they got the big and raised the sand and told Moses, why you bring us out here? We don't have no grocery store out here that we can buy groceries. We don't have uh, no water plant out here that we can get water. We don't even have a clothing store. We can change our robes out here. Say something about Moses told him to stay fast and yeah. hold your peace. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. And they got mad at Moses. And Moses told him, leave me alone. And told Moses, look at here. We need something to eat. And God sent manna all night yeah. and all day. And he fed a man for 40 years out in the wilderness and he didn't do it. Say something about it. He sent them quail at the same time. My God is a provider. He's the same one that yes, took yes, two yes. fish and five rolls of bread and fed a multitude of 5,000. Yes. I count the women and children. I'm going to preach here on the day because tomorrow ain't promised to me. I'm going to tell you something. I feel like shouting for God has shown up. I brought love, fellowship a, a mighty long way. When they got over there and they got the big one and tell me, uh, they got down about the 32nd year in the wilderness. Let me tell you, sometime uh, you're going to lose your, your blessing because oh, you're turning your back on God. Uh, they oh, said they got out there and they told Moses again, uh, look here Moses, I want you to give us some water. And Moses got mad and he struck the rock. Uh, God told him, go and uh, get the people water. But he got mad and he struck the rock. Uh, and God looked at him and God told him, you You'll never go into the promised land because you disobeyed what I told you. I told you to go and get the water. All you had to do is go to the rock. You didn't have to strike the rock. Because I already commanded the rock to give you water. Any all right? Sometimes, brother, sister, you lose your blessing because you don't do what the Lord told you to do. God would not let Moses go into the promised land. But let me tell you, when they got over there, they said something about her. Moses took her. 12 of his people, he told them, I want you to go into the city. I want you to search it out and find out if we can take the city and tell me that all of them came back, but 10 say we can't take them out. Let me tell you, there's always some naysayers that don't believe in God, yeah. don't believe God got the power. 10 of them said, no, no, they all like grasshoppers. Uh -huh. They all over there, and they stand like giants, but they had to. 
Hallelujah. One named Joshua and the other named Caleb. They came and told Moses, we can take it in the name of our God. All we got to do is just press forward in the name of our God. They said something about her. Moses uh, told them, uh, okay, uh, we're going to go forward. They got out there, uh, and they call themselves uh, cheating on God. Yeah. God, uh, already know your thoughts uh, before you thank them and say something about, look at here. Uh, y'all got here. Uh, y'all saying what we can't do. Uh, I'm going to tell you, we're going to do uh, what the Lord told us to do. But he already gave us uh, ten commandments. Uh, he yeah, told us, yeah. thou shalt love no other God uh, but me. Uh, yeah. Thou shalt not uh, have no other love before me. Uh, all of the things that he told him to do, hey, thou should cover thy own wife hey, and not another. Hey, ain't he all right? Yeah. I can read them. Uh, it's up on the wall. Hey, if you want to see it, hey, it's right there. Hey, let me tell you something. Hey, don't play games with God. Hey, they said something about hey, Caleb and, and uh, Joshua was the only two hey, that went over to the, the promised land hey, after God hey, had talked to them. Hey, said something about when they got over there. Hey, God, God hey, Kill Moses and told Joshua, my servant Moses, he's dead. Ain't he all right? Yeah. And now I'm going to anoint you to carry my people into the promised land. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to tell you something. One day, God's going to take me from labor to reward. And I believe God might have another that he's going to appoint to take my place. It might be you. I don't know. But I'm going to tell you something. you got to teach you want to come behind you what they need to do in order to serve the Lord. I tell people a novice cannot handle God's work. You got to train them. You got to teach them. You got to let them know. First of all, you got to deny yourself in order to pick up your cross and follow him. Ain't he all right? Yeah. I'm going to preach you today. Yeah. So somebody need to hear this. Yeah. Ain't he all right? They said something about after Joshua it took a man and God took Moses. Don't nobody know where he took him to, but he was dead. Ain't he all right? And they said to Joshua, God told him, now I want you to get my people ready. I want you to go and take Canaan of Galilee. I want you to conquer because I'm going to be with you. Don't be scared. Be a man of honor. Be a man that go out there without fear because if I tell you to go, I'm going to go with you. They said something about, look at here, uh, boy, yeah. you know what he told him? He, he, took, uh, he took two of his uh, foreign observers like they used to do in the military. Yeah. They take the foreign observers, uh -huh. send them out to scout out uh -huh. the area to find out what's going on and come back and report to the commander. He told the two to go and I want you to scout out Canaan over there. Yeah, yeah. Don't you worry about nothing. Everything going to be alright. And the Bible tells me they went over. Yes, they did. The River Jordan and they went into the land. And when they got there, they said they were Holland by the name of Rahab. Rahab took him and took him into her house. She lived on top of the top of the hill and she had yeah. all of these people that lived under her. And she, she took those two spies and she hid them. That's but yeah. she did. They said there's always somebody trying to pull you down. That's what I'm trying to tell you. When you're working for the Lord, everybody don't want to hear you. Because when they went into the city, they said something about her. They looked at her. Uh, the, the holiday, Rehab told him, I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to hide you. Yes. I'm not going to let nothing happen to you. Yes. But here's one of these troublemakers, mm -hmm. backbiters, uh -huh. went to the king and told the king, King, I want you to know this day there's some servants of Israel coming to scout out our land. They want to take our land from us. King, what you going to do? And the king sent some of his servants and they went into the city to scope out what was going on. And the Bible tells me when they went out, they went into Rahab's house. And they asked Rahab, where are the men that came into your house? We know it's two of them that come from, come from the Israelites. Rahab looked at him and said, yeah, they did come. And they were trying to find out what was going on. But I can't tell you where they are. Because after we talked, they left. And they left the city. 
So I don't know what happened. If you go out of the city and go out, you might catch them. Because they had me gone there long and said that the workers of the king got in a hurry and they ran out. And after they got out of the city, they closed the gate. Yes. And wouldn't let them back in. And Rahab went up on the roof. Uh -huh. She had already covered them up with the flax on top of the house. Yeah, yeah. She started disassembling the flax. And then she told them, rise up. The ones that trying to capture you and do harm to you is no longer here. Mm -hmm. They're gone. Wow. So don't you worry. But all I want you to do, I want you to go to the hill country. And I want you to hide there and stay there for three days. Stay there until they stop searching for you. And then you can go back to your homeland. But she said, before you go, I want you to make me a promise. That when you come in to Canaan, you will not hurt me. You will not hurt my daddy. You will not hurt my mama. Right, right. My sisters and my brothers. All the servants and all that they have. You will not hurt us and take it away from us. This promise I need from you. And they said that the two servants told them, we will not harm you as long as you do what we tell you. And you looked at them and said, well, first of all, I want you to show a sign. Come on, come on. That you love the Lord. And I want you to take it and hang it outside the window to leave it there because she had taken the two servants of God and let them down through the window into the city and there was a scarlet rope and he said leave it there don't don't move it don't dismount it and as your words say let it be done said if you Get your mama, your daddy, your sisters, your brothers, and all, all of their helpers and everybody and keep, and keep them in your house. And not let them go out trying to find out what's going on. Just let them stay there. Say no harm should come to you. But if it does, it'll be on us, not on you. Say we make you this promise. Don't that sound like something that God did over in Egypt? Exactly. When he told Moses to tell the people to go in mm -hmm. and stay because at midnight yes. I'm coming over. I'm coming over. And when I come over, I'm bringing the devil in. Yes, Lord. No. And I'm going to kill the firstborn male child in Pharaoh's house and all of the ones out. But I'm going to tell you this. Now, if you get nosy, get nosy and you go out in the midst of the streets where I told you not to go, I'm killing you too. Wow. So we're going to have to learn how to keep God's word and do what he tells us. And they said that after three days that the servants was hid in the mountain. They went back and told Moses. They told, I'm sorry, they told Jephro, uh, Joshua, I'm sorry, I'm getting mixed up. Told Joshua all right. what the Lord had showed them and told Joshua, we got a woman over there that protected us and took care of us. Right, right. She's a Canaanite, but she took good care of us and we promised her that we would not let any harm come to her or her family or anything to have. And right. Joshua said, so let it be. And they tell me that after Joshua got the word, I'm trying to take my time to get you there. So that after he had gotten the word from the two spies, that he called the people and he told them, I, I want you to tell all the people. Now we're looking at over two million people right. that was out there because I could tell you about the ones that left out of Egypt, out of Egypt died out there mm -hmm. for disobedience. God wouldn't let them go over. He killed all of them. There wasn't but two that came That's out right. of That's right. Egypt that went over. That was too. Caleb and Joshua. Joshua. Yes, Even Moses couldn't go over. He mm -hmm. killed Moses too. Disobedience, God will kill you. Come on, man. If you don't do what he tells you. Yeah. And they tell me that Joshua told him, I want you to get seven priests. And I want them to carry the ark of the covenant. Because 
Just anybody couldn't touch the ark of the covenant. That's when I tell people, just anybody can't touch the communion table right now. You got to be set aside in the name of Jesus Christ in order to touch it. And see, they took them, A.Z., and they told them, said, now what I want you to do, I want you to carry the ark of the covenant of God, and I want you to go down to the brink of the river, and I want you to stand fast and don't move and say something about they took the rods and they went in through the through the hounds on the Ark of the Covenant and raised right. it up. Right. And I don't know whether you know what was in there or not, but I'm finna tell you what was in the Ark. The Ten Commandments was in there. Right. Aaron's rod was in there. Right. And manna from heaven and a jaw was in there. Yeah. Well, God had blessed them 40 years with manna from heaven. They had it in the jar, and they kept, that's what was in the Ark of the Covenant. And they went down there, and they stood fast, and God, my God, let me show you how powerful my God is. He's the same one that wow. told the Red Sea to stand up. He looked at the Jordan River and told the Jordan River to stand up also. Amen. My people are getting ready to go across in my name. And say something about a, it was harvest time, and during harvest time, water would overflow Jordan and go out into all of the land, and it would fertilize and filtrate all of the, the, the elements and all of the seeds and for the growth or whatever, and God would not let the water flow. God told the water to stand up, and I want my children to go across the River Jordan. Say something about when they got over on the other side. Now notice now, I told you it wasn't but two that came out of Egypt that could go, and that was Joshua and Caleb. But God made a promise, and he didn't tell a lie. He said, I'm going to give this land to my people. And they said something about when they went over on the other side, the word was out that God had stood water upon water at the Red Sea. God had stood water upon water at the Jordan River. And the people in Canaan were scared. And they had all of the walls and all of the gates locked up and nobody went in and nobody came out. And they were sitting there in fear because they heard that the children of Israel was coming over on the other side. And yeah, yeah. somebody said something about uh, when they heard them coming, uh, Joshua told uh, the priest, I want y'all to take a ram horn and I want y'all to go around, uh, go around the wall uh, one time, uh, six days. Uh, each day, one time, and blow your horn huh, real loud. <laughs> Ain't he all right? And tell something loud. Huh? God told him that. Now, when you go around six times, and, and they tell the priest uh, to blow their horn huh, one time, but the seventh day, huh, I want them all to go around, huh, not just the priest, huh, because when they went around, huh, the people had to be quiet. Huh? I don't want nobody to make no noise huh, until I tell them to shout. Huh? Say something about her. Huh? He told them, I want all of you to go around the seventh Seven time on the seventh day they, they heard the word of Joshua and they went around and let me tell you something, ain't nothing wrong with following the priest of God. Cause one thing I tell you, your blessings come through the priest of God. Whether you know it or not, yes, we've been set aside. Let me tell you something, somebody want to ostracize them, you can't do nothing because my Bible told me if my God be for me, more in the world against me. Say something about her, two so in and went around her seven times. Didn't they do it at seven days in a week? Good God Almighty. And when my God let them go around that seventh day, that said something about it, told all of the priests, I want you to blow your horn yeah. real loud. And told the people, now, now I want you to shout yeah. in the name of Jehovah. They said something about over two million people got out there and they got to shout. They said something about the wall of Jericho fell down. And they shout because God was in the midst of of that shout. Let me tell you something. The problems that you have, give them to the Lord. God is in the midst of your problem. You said that he's a problem solver. You said that he's a hard fixer and he's a mind, a regulator. Yeah, you said that yeah. he can do all things but fail. But I'm going to tell you what you better do if you want the Lord to bless you, brothers and sisters. You better put on the whole armor of yeah, God yeah. if you're going to fight this battle. He said, finally, my brother, this is Hebrews 6, 10 through 17. He said, finally, my brother, be strong yeah. in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. And you're all right. Yeah.
may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Anybody in here now know you got devils on your trail? Amen. Anybody in here know that if you just stop for a second, Satan will come in and entertain you. He'll put up something in your mind. But they told me a long time ago, a two-folded mind ain't good for nothing. You either gonna be for God or you're gonna be for come Satan. On, but I'm gonna tell you something. Can't yeah. nobody do us like our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against the power, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, and the all right, against spirits of wickedness in high places. Look at here, I'm trying to tell you, everywhere you go today, you got those naysayers, you got people that don't love you, they smile in your face, and they want to take your place, they backstab us, but I tell you one thing, if my God be for us, he's more in the world against us, you treat your wife right, you treat your husband right. Let me tell you, I'll show you a good example. See that woman over there on the end, 47 years. Yeah. She had to help her clean me up. She had to polish me up. Talked to me yesterday and told me, baby, let me tell you, God's been good to us. Look how far he brought us. Because I'm going to tell you, when I first got married, I was a rough, rough rascal. I didn't care about going to church. I didn't care about doing nothing. I did went out there and I did everything that I wanted to do. God told me, look at here, if you're going to be my child, you got to throw all that mess away. You got to press forward. You got to look to the heel from which come your help yeah. for all of your help come from the Lord somebody say what is he trying to say I'm going to try to tell you in this way when you're working for the Lord everybody is not wanting to live hear you I got people in my family don't want to hear the true word of God but I pray for them and you got to pray for them if God gave gave Moses the vision he gave Joshua the insight to take the people across he got work for all of us to do anybody in here Want to go to hell? Ain't he all right? Do you know God? Do you know you try to tell people how good God really is, and they don't want to hear you, and you got to keep telling them. But I tell you something about my God. He said, "If you be ashamed of me before man, I'll be ashamed of you before my Father, which is in hell. I ain't worrying about nobody trying to get me into hell. I got to do this for myself, and one way I can do it is deny myself." Why not? Pick up my cross. Yes, sir. And follow him. Follow him. I know I ain't gonna live 77 more years or 76 more years. But my spirit will. Come on. My God will never die. Come on. The songwriter said, I'll never die. While Jesus lives. Yes. No, I lose my holy right. I keep that which he gave to me, because Jesus keep my life. Tell it the way it's supposed to be told. Sometimes they'll hear you, sometimes they won't. But don't let Satan control your life. Yes, sir. Pray for your family. Our children need all the prayers that we can give them. These little babies are here today. They need help. And the only way they can get what they need is we help them. And everybody that around your child, you might not want all of them to be around your child. Because a whole lot of them don't know the Lord. And they can destroy everything that you have built up in the name of the Lord. I know this because I was one of them that failed. Uh -huh. But I got up. Yes, sir. Took me 30 years before I got baptized. But look at me now. Look at me now. I wouldn't take Nothing for this journey. Yes, sir. Ain't he a good God? Yes, he is. Anybody in here know God's been good to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't have to put nobody down. No, we don't. We're here to try to help little people up. Yes, but we're not here to be played with. Come on now. We're somebody. Somebody. I heard a preacher this morning. I'm getting ready to close out. I heard a preacher this morning and said, don't, don't mess with Mother So and So. And they look in there and say, you come in mother's house and try to take something from her? Mother's packing. <laughs> Mother will see so you getting out of there. One way, you either walk or you roll out. But don't go in there trying to take nothing from mother. And I really believe if you try to take something from somebody, you set yourself up. Yeah. My God is a giver. He's not a taker. 
He blessed us and he allowed us to come together. And I thank God for you. My time is up. My, my, my. But remember, if you don't hear nothing else from me today, remember, everybody don't want to hear you talk about the Lord. But tell it in a way. Tell it in half. God bless you. Amen. And may he forever keep you. Amen. Doors and churches open. Amen. You can come by letter. Christmas experience, kind of about I told my wife, I said, baby, I have read so much this week that it's all just running together.